Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today <laughs> we're going to be answering a question that gets asked actually quite often. Help! My tattoo is star scarred. What can I do? So, can you repair scarred skin in a tattoo by getting a tattoo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, now that that's over with, can you repair scarred skin? Yeah, you can, surprisingly enough. Um, it's gonna depend on the, the person, right, of course. Let's, let's preface this at the beginning. If you have a history of hypertrophic tissues, I'm gonna write this down, right? Hypertrophic tissues, tissues, or, man, that nib is broken, or keloiding, This is not gonna work for you, right? <clears throat> it's only gonna work for people who do not have such things occurring. Because if you try to do a repair on scarred tissue and you have hypertrophic tissue formation or keloiding occurring, <coughs> um, sorry, we're still <coughs> sick. That's like day six. Um, what you're gonna do is when you go over this tattoo that's already scarred, you're just gonna increase the chances of it, especially if you have keloiding, of it becoming just a worse scar. So. Um, make sure if you're a tattooer out there, or if you're a client who's re watching this trying to figure out how best to repair their busted ass tattoo, um, that you know this, right? You can usually tell if you have keloiding, if you get like a piercing, ear piercing, and you have big growths that start on there, nostril piercings, anywhere in your face, you see big growths of skin that, that happen um, after the procedure's actually been done, that's gonna be keloiding. Hypertrophic tissues are, if you have a cut, or if you've had like a bad cut, like say from a, a knife or something like that, and the skin heals up above normal plane, right, but slowly goes down over time, that's hypertrophic tissue formation, right? So, <clears throat> unless you have a very slight expression of subtypes of things like hypertrophic tissue formations, you, you, maybe you can do this, but I'm not recommending it because it takes a lot of skill to know how to repair the skin that you're working with. Okay, so how do you repair those scarred skins? Well, first, we have to see exactly what concentration of pigments are in there, right? Because, let's mark this down so I don't forget what we're doing. How much ah, ink is in there? Um, if there is a great quantity of pigment inside the area that is scarred, it can be easy enough to go over this tattoo without having to introduce more pigment into the area. So why do we worry about that? So if you already have a decent concentration of pigment in scarred tissue, if we take a needle and we decide to go over top of the tissue, which we'll actually give them the procedure here in a second, what you're gonna be doing is introducing more pigment. You can end up with an oversaturated state, which can lead you with <coughs> blowouts or blow unders watch your video on that um, or even just like general leaching that's gonna happen over time right if you're adding too much to the area it's gonna have to go somewhere when you get older so if you have too much ink in the skin you should probably not use ink in this procedure if it looks like it's faded out a lot and there's not a whole lot there go ahead and use actual pigment match to the colors that are there um, <clears throat> that's gonna be our first caveat before we describe this number two is gonna be how extensive is the damage is the oh geez man I can't spell for hell today this is what happens when you're sick my brain is going faster than my hand can go ah uh, damage ah uh, so if if the damage to the skin is going to be like let's say you got a, a you know palm sized traditional tattoo and all of it is just this raised mass right almost looks like a hypertrophic tissue um just ball of hypertrophic tissues, but it's not, right? It's just like this heavily scarred mess of tissue that just like looks super worn out and it's aged inappropriately. Um, doing this repair probably isn't gonna work, right? What I'm, what I'm looking for is small areas, especially if you're new uh, as a tattooer trying to figure out how to do this effectively. Um, you, you only wanna work in small sections so you can gauge how the repair is gonna go, right? <clears throat> so if there's a lot of damage, I mean, just to even save the client money and time and all that other stuff, don't, don't try to do it, right? Um, if the person is having a really hard time with it and needs to do it, you can approach this, but we'll have to make a video about how to approach repairing scarred skin when there's excessive damage a later time. This is just gonna be for minor stuff today, okay? <coughs> so, 
I need to bring some water out here. Uh, so how do we do this, right? What we're gonna do is model this off of, model repair off of derm abrasion. Now, what's derm abrasion? So they sand your skin off and make it reform, literally, right? Um, so derm abrasion can be done by, you know, skilled uh, dermatologists, you know, because the chances of you doing something incorrectly to someone's skin is so great that you could scar them for life. Now, what we're going to be doing with a tattoo machine is not the same, right? Because this is absolutely super invasive, we've got to worry a ton about infection control and all these other things after you get derm abrasion done. What we're going to be doing instead is, is small pocket healing, which is going to be more focused derm abrasion located on the points inside a tattoo that are scarred, right? And let's say it's isolated. Let's say we have a line and we see some scarring from like here to here, right? You can see a little bit of bubbling. Maybe the pigment's fallen out and it's not very well saturated, but everything else seems to look fine. <clears throat> the pigment concentration is high. We're going to do this without pigment. If it looks like a lot of it has fallen out and we're going to use some. And all we're going to do is just topically apply the same line, but at a very shallow, shallow um, placement with a needle, right? Instead of going down to the like middle part of the dermis, right? Our aim is going to be just to break the top layer of the dermis and cause trauma <clears throat> at the upper layer to break the epidermis and then implant it in the very, very top layer of the dermis. You're basically just scratching the skin, right? Very, very, very light. What does this do? And because we're breaking the epidermis, having needles go through it, you're forcing the body to repair a wound, right? Um, and if we're just doing like very, very, very topical, I won't do this all the way down. If we're doing very topical damage to the top part of this, your body is going to be forced to repair only the slightest amount of damage to the area, right? <clears throat> Those look like dicks. Oh, Ryan, you dipshit. That's not professional at all. <laughs> so what we, what we end up doing is instead of like trying to just repack this line, right? Because what we're going to be doing if we repack the line is we're creating a ton of extra trauma the body has to repair. And if it's already been weakened, because it, you know it's been scarred before, the structural support to try and rebuild the body more efficiently in the way that it was is not going to be there, right? If we think about all those collagen and elastin fibers, they're supposed to be springy, are just kind of set up like this, right? Inside the skin, we'll go inside the dermis, right? When you cause trauma too excessive, which causes it to look like it's weak or you know, a little bit clear, maybe there's a loss of some color, things like that, is because when it's remodeled, the body has done everything it could just to heal it as quickly as possible. So rather than having these standard springy bits on top of it, <clears throat> which uh, makes the skin like elastic and stuff, uh, you know, bounces and moves like normal skin does, you end up with just this like big ball of skin, right? Like different cells that make up the skin. <clears throat> Collagen and elastin just kind of interweave into a ball, which changes its actual pliability texture and ability to hold like pigment, right? So when that happens, when we do this light, like dermabrasion type thing, which we just cross it out, we're not gonna go that far into it. We're forcing the body by introducing trauma to start to repair what's there, right? This is the theory behind it. If there still is some scaffolding left because we haven't destroyed the tissue like we would normally through a tattoo process, we're going to give it enough space to hopefully start binding to new cells that are going to go and fill it, which is going to decrease the quantity of the actual like scar tissue, right? Kind of fun. And when you're doing this, you have to be very, very, very careful, right? <clears throat> On average, we're not going to want to start inducing any type of trauma outside of where the scar is. So if we have a space, let's say this is like a five round, right? A, a line that was run, we're not going to use a 13 to try and do this damage, right? Um, we can go a little bit over. I mean, I would use maybe like a nine, an 11 if you wanted to. <clears throat> um, but you're going to want to do something that's going to be creating just basically like hugging that that area right to make sure that it's going to be healed um we can use a smaller grouping as well and i've actually found that those seem to work really well especially if you know how to use them right um we're all we're going to be doing is just painting basically right on the inside right we're not even going to try to cover the entire area we're not trying to paint the scar tissue 
because what's that going to do? That's going to cause the body to <clears throat> heal more trauma, which is going to decrease the amount of pigment that's there, right? Because it's going to have to heal. Some of it's going to be pushed out. Some of it will be absorbed. Um, and it's going to destroy the consistency inside the line. That's also like why we don't like to do touch-ups, right? If you do a touch-up, you're going to be breaking open the skin of something that's already there, and you're going to cause pigment to move. That's just what's going to happen, right? <clears throat> so the idea is just to very lightly just just mark that skin just a little bit, right? Force the body to heal up. It's a very, very, very technical application of stuff. But in saying that, yes, you can repair scarred skin, right? You just need to know how to do it. <clears throat> so take this as your intro on the theory, right? The idea is being able to identify how bad that the scar tissue is, where the largest pockets of that scar tissue are, right? Working around some of the maybe worse areas, depending on the amount of trauma that's there, to induce repair right mechanisms inside of your skin so that it can start getting rid of those you know aggregations of collagen and elastin that make the skin not work very well anyway that's it this is ryan from better tattoo and signing off